Hey, I'm Brie. Welcome to the seventh episode of my exciting European summer series. We've already visited London, Iceland, Amsterdam, Paris, and the French Riviera. In this video, we explore Cinque Terre, a region on the northwest coast of Italy renowned for its dramatic coastal beauty and charming, colorful villages. Cinque Terre in Italian means five lands. These five lands are Monte Rosso Amere, Venazza, Cornelia, Manarola, and Rio Maggiore. The region's breathtaking landscape, historical significance, vibrant culture, and delectable local cuisine make it a must-visit destination for travelers seeking an authentic Italian experience. This was my personal favorite place we visited on this Europe trip, so get ready for a truly delightful experience. Hey guys and welcome to this Cinque Terre vlog. We are so excited to be here. We just arrived and I'll show you our room. We're staying at Alta Marea rooms and we are in the Cornelia room. If you know anything about Cinque Terre, that's one of the five towns that comprise of Cinque Terre. Isn't it so beautiful this view oh my gosh we have our breakfast in the morning and then this is the bathroom very clean very cozy the customer service here has been really good as well this isn't sponsored at all but this like old gentleman gave us all his favorite recommendations for how to do Cinque Terre, his favorite restaurants in La Spezia. When coming to Cinque Terre, we decided to stay in La Spezia than staying in one of those five towns because it was a lot cheaper. <laughs> so if you're wanting a budget friendly option, then this potentially could be one of them. It's currently seven o'clock. We took the train from Nice this morning to here. So we're pretty tired, pretty hungry. We might head to one of the five towns. We're thinking we might start at Manarola to see the sunset. Why not? While well, the sun's still out. And the trains that go to Cinque Terre from La Spezia, they literally go all the way up until 12 a.m. The train ticket costs five euros each to get to Manarola. If you want to explore all the towns in one day, there is another ticket that you can get that is more cost efficient, which I will explain tomorrow. So we've just come to dinner to a place called Nessun Dorma. It was recommended to us by our host at our hotel and the food looks so good, but the view is even better. Like, I'm sorry, that looks so freaking beautiful. <laughs> the sun's just set and yeah, we're so hungry. We can't wait to eat. it's the next day we are just eating brekkie on the bed looking at this beautiful view this is the breakfast that they gave us it's a chocolate croissant and little toast with like raspberry jam and a juice <laughs> <laughs> can't forget the juice after we finish brekkie we're gonna head out and head to Cinque Terre there's gonna be a few hikes involved which is exciting we'll do some swimming eating chilling it's gonna be a fun day. Last night was so incredible, so I'm excited to see what is installed today. Hey guys, so we just got to the train station and we've just bought our daily pass for Cinque Terre. They were 36 euro for two, and it gives us unlimited travel between the five different cities. Our host suggested to visit Monterosso Amere as our first stop and then work our way down through the other towns. So that's what we did. Monterosso is the largest of the five towns and has the most amenities. Beach lovers should definitely stay here. You can rent chairs and umbrellas or even kayak to explore the many coves around the coast. Montoroso also has the largest selection of hotels and guest houses situated near the beach. There are hiking trails that connect the five different towns, so we decided to hike from Montoroso to Venazza. So on the trails here, you have to wear closed toe shoes. <laughs> like that. <laughs> no flip-flops. <laughs> Turns out the train tickets that we bought actually allow us access to the hiking paths as well. So we didn't have to pay extra for them. They were inclusive with our like train tickets, which is so good. Before we got to the hike, we stopped by a market. We bought some apples just to give us some energy because it's like an hour and a half walk. Enjoy the views. Online, the difficulty level says average, but I'm going to say it's like extremely difficult. If you have a look at what we had to climb up, all the stairs, the terrain was very rocky, very uneven. We did have to stop a few times, but in saying that, don't let that put you off from doing this hike because it was absolutely incredible. Like the views that we saw were just breathtaking. As mentioned, there are hikes between the five towns. Some are closed due to maintenance work, so definitely look that up before you go. <laughs> You've got it, babe. 
Yeah, baby. Just don't fall off the cliff, yeah. okay? Not to the edge, please. Cheers. <laughs> so we've just stopped here to have a little break, eat our apples, and enjoy this incredible view. So stunning. So nice. Look at this review. This is absolutely stunning. This is the next town that we've just hiked to. Vernazza. Vernazza is probably the most picturesque of the villages and is named one of the most beautiful villages in Italy. It's a traditional fishing village with colorful Ligurian houses and boats bobbing on the waters of the small harbor. In Vernazza, there is only a few hotels to stay in, but several bed and breakfasts and apartments for rent. Most of the restaurants and bars are concentrated around the seaside piazza. There is a small sandy beach at the night. After long hike we were considering swimming here but the sand looks a bit ugly. I don't know, Monterosso looked way better for beaches and swimming so who knows we might find another town or go back there for a swim. We found the secret little passageway where there's no tourists which is fantastic. Hopefully it's the right way to where we're trying to get to. Yeah. We're trying to get to Castello Doria, which is a castle that you can like walk up to the very top and see a really cool view of this place. So we just made it up to the top of the castle. We're going to climb this in a little bit, but it costs two euros to get up here and they only take cash. So do that because we just had enough, luckily. And it's a lot of stairs to walk up here to find out that you can't get up here if you don't have cash. Anyways, we're going to explore. Coming up to this castle is definitely a must when in Vernazza. The view were absolutely incredible and we absolutely loved our time up here. Something we learned was that this medieval castle was primarily used to protect the village from pirates. So we just took the train to Rio Maggiore. I've been practicing that if you couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> but it's actually so gorgeous here as well. Yeah. Um, and we're going to get lunch here. We got food at this place called Tutti Frutti. We saw every tourist and their dog walking around with these cups of fried seafood and because these towns are on the ocean you know that the seafood is going to be amazing. I think you'll like that. Really? Yes. I don't think so. Yes. It's a freaking octopus. No, no, it's not. You'll like it. And it's got a good flavor. Like, it's nice. It's not like, you yeah. don't think, I was supposed to think it's yummy. I just think I'm eating chips or something. Right. I'm eating french fries. French fries. Mm. See, I told you. When you come to Cinque Terre, promise me you will try these cups of fried seafood. Please, please, please try it. <laughs> they were delicious. Rio Maggiore is considered to be the most romantic of the Cinque Terre villages. It's ideal for young travelers and couples. It's also said to have the best sunset spot in Cinque Terre. And in the harbor, there are companies offering boat and kayak rentals as well as boat tours. Hey guys, so we've made our way to Monterosso. We're kind of doing all of the five Cinque Terre towns completely not in order but it's your choose your own adventure kind of yeah. deal which is kind of cool we yeah. feel like a swim now we're hot we've done a hike we feel like we want to jump in the ocean and apparently this place has the best beaches and from what we saw when we went to all the other different towns I agree that this one does have the best beaches like look at that water so freaking beautiful swimming at this beach for the past like three hours it's the one with the orange and green umbrellas that you can see before it's such a nice place to swim because it has like these rock formations that kind of come out of the ocean and the ocean is like so clear it's crazy I really wish we had snorkels or something. Really I know, cool. yeah. But um, it did cost to come to this beach, but it was definitely worth it. And a good like time to relax yeah. after like a big day hiking. I think if I can add, it's even worth it just to not be around like massive crowds. Like there's not that many people here and it's beautiful, so yeah. worth the price, I think. Definitely. And I feel like I have less worry yeah. about people stealing our stuff as well. Yeah, true. We have just arrived at Cornelia, which is the last Tere that we have not been
painting. <laughs> Apparently everyone hates this one, so <laughs> let's see. Look at these freaking cute, sorry, these freaking cute, I call them tricycle trucks. They're so Tricycles. little. We're going to go on a quest to try and find some pizza here and fly the drone. We have a time limit of 20 minutes. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> Cornelia is the only village which is not built directly on the sea, but on a cliff 100 meters above sea level. It is the smallest of the five villages. And as I mentioned before, it is the least popular, but I personally actually really loved Cornelia. If you minus the 382 steps that you have to go up to reach the village, it's a 10 out of 10 for me. It is probably the most authentic town and the one with the least tourists. It's a great place to enjoy sunsets and it has a very romantic atmosphere in the evenings. Yeah, so if you keep walking down all these steps, it does lead to the marina, which there's some people swimming and stuff, for like sitting on the rock. If you look there, there's a Braden flying a drone. Also, this is a great spot to watch the sunset. I don't know if you can even see it, but it's like this little terracey bit. We just walked down some stairs and yeah, great place for the sunset. just got our first pizza in Italy. Woo! Oh, the people there were so nice. They were so, so great. lovely. We loved that place. To be honest, we've That's had a lot of right. encounters with really nice Italians. Really good impression, I think. Yeah. To be honest, I feel like I've absolutely loved this one, but the only negative is that there's so many stairs everywhere and the train station is like all the way down there. So it's going to take us like 15, 20 minutes just to get back to the train station. <laughs> Which we didn't account for. <laughs> we definitely didn't do this little trip in 20 minutes. More like an hour and <laughs> a half. Like 30 minutes driving a pizza. <laughs> yeah. We did both things, but it just took... Yeah, just... Oops, and that's hour. probably the train that we're going to miss. From the train station to Cornelia, when we first got here, we went on a road. We didn't go up all these steps. We went up this really big road, which if you don't like steps or can't do steps for a long period of time, I'll definitely recommend going up that road because to be honest, it probably took the same amount of time, but less strenuous effort. <laughs> yeah, going down the stairs, I, I am wondering now like what's better to take. And I feel like, sort of feel like, oh, this would be faster to get up, but maybe I'm being deceived because going down so easy. Yeah. So I think going up would actually be a big pain in the ass. It <laughs> like, would. We're not even halfway. Let me try. Oh, it's not too bad, to be honest. I don't know. Really? It's... They're, they're long steps, which is good. Choose your not own like adventure. Yeah. So. Also, there's a possibility that there is like some sort of shuttle between the train station. I'm not sure. We just heard some people up the top talking about it and uh, it seemed like they're waiting for a car or something. So that may be an option. Don't know. Research. It. Yeah, look into it. Yeah. Oh, they cut it interesting. And that's how you actually do it. It's a real Italian way. Okay, first pizza in Italy. We've got margarita. Mmm. Mmm. Mm. Crunchy base. Tomato -y, thin crust. Cheesy. 4.5 out of 5. Delicious. So we just took the train to Rio Maggiore um, because apparently the sunset's really nice here. It's already looking so beautiful in the buildings. Everyone's down here watching the sunset and you can't really have a view up here. So I think we might go down there with them. Good morning guys, it's the next day. Day three here. We just have the morning here until we head to our next destination. We've just packed up our bags and stuff, left them at our hotel. We're gonna head to Monarola because we went there on the first night and we loved it, but we didn't get to see it during the day. We only saw it when the sun set and stuff. And so we kind of wanna go there during the day and explore. So we've arrived at Manarola, there it is behind me, and we're just hiking along this cliff because we're going to see if we can get a good view of Manarola. I'll show you where the cliff leads. So you literally come up this and then you go all the way, follow the path, and we're going to try and go over here and see if we can see a cool view. So we've just walked up that path, we have this beautiful view of Manarola. Over here is Cornelia see this is actually the path that leads to Cornelia so if you wanted to hike between the two towns you could do that it doesn't look very far to be honest yeah it looks like a 
maybe Fairly half an hour or so. Decent, yeah. Also, to this point, we haven't had to pay anything. So I think if we continued, we'd have to pay the fee to do the hike. But to get to this point, you don't have to pay. So if you're visiting Manarola, definitely come up here, have a hike. After our little hike and seeing those incredible views, we went into the town and got some brekkie. We both got these yogurt with berries and chocolate and also a focaccia. Manarola is one of the most famous villages of Cinque Terre. The village has a small harbour with a boat ramp, picturesque multicoloured houses facing the sea and a tiny piazza with seafood restaurants. Manarola has some incredible viewing points which we've shown you already so definitely make sure you take a few photos here. So we've just climbed up this area and you definitely get a better view of Manarola but it's like super crowded. Something cool to do here that I've seen people do is like cliff jumping so yeah wish we bought our swimmers. Shivola, shivola. Come la pioggia scivola, come un bambino rotola. Hey guys, so we've just come back to accommodation. We've picked up our bag and we're heading to our next destination, which is Florence, which I'm so excited about. I'm going to give you guys a one day itinerary if you're coming to Cinque Terre, what I recommend to do. And I think I've nailed it down to like a great itinerary. We have absolutely loved Cinque Terre. 